What's up, Anditos? And we're live, headed into another build lab. Today, we're going to be working on that Sitar uh, build that we created the other day, you know, where we were showing, showcasing really the uh, Sitar with steady hands over the rail splitter. And we found that the Sitar with steady handed was way better. So that's what we're up to today. We're going to make a better build for it. Let's get into it. And we're live. What's going on, Banditos? Hope you're having a beautiful start of your week like I am. It's been pretty productive this week, kind of getting some things done. So I'm sure you guys have seen the new videos uh, that we've released. So I have pinned those at the top of the chat feed. So make sure you check those out. Uh, the last build video we put out was the hybrid skill build, the, the Habsburginator, <laughs> kind of mocking Heisenberg from Breaking Bad. And this is the build that he would run. This is what I got on right here. Uh, it's the last build I ran. I didn't get a play yesterday, so I'm really sad. I got to get my hours in. But uh, today, yeah, so we're going to be working on the C-Tar. You know, so we came up with a really cool build for it um, that was really strong. But it was sort of vanilla, the build itself, because we were mostly testing the difference between the C-Tar with Steady Handed over the Rail Splitter. And we did determine that this is way better than just uh, the Rail Splitter uh, and its immediate accuracy because this gives you so much more um with that stability and doubling it 
basically the accuracy that you would get off of that rail splitter talent and then you get the free reload too so this was just a lot cooler and this is the way we're rolling and let's create something fun for it <laughs> um so last time what we started out with is we, we did the coyote chest i'm sorry we did the coyote mask and then we ran um a, a full striker set using the backpack and chest and that made it pretty strong uh but that's the kind of part that's kind of vanilla i feel especially since I've, i feel like i've been seeing a lot of those builds up back to back lately <laughs> on youtube so kind of want to avoid that but i want to um make a really good build for this at the same time so i was thinking like maybe we start i mean i think we started like this but i was thinking maybe we start um with like a three-piece umbra and go from there but i kind of i kind of interested in that um that catharsis mask for some reason i kind of got an itch for that mask you know we created the catharsis build for the f2000 and it's kind of fun the catch to it is basically um you need to have the tank the resistance in order to absorb damage so that you can purge a lot um it's a sort of a sort of the downside of it um i mean unless we go like something with i guess heartbreaker like if we ran three pieces heartbreaker since we kind of have already have the speed here um but part of me wants to do like this uh three piece umbra for more speed and then roll into i should probably avoid umbra right like we should probably avoid umbra because i got some pending builds i was thinking like three piece umbra two piece striker like start there for fun and then kind of see where we go um because that's a pretty fun build on very fast weapons but maybe we should start with heartbreaker and work in some um some armor automatic armor regen kind of thing going and the chest piece is pretty fun on that but we could explore different chest pieces also um let's see if i get some other because with with what's nice about heartbreaker is that we can balance in our armor right you don't have to you need armor to get some nice stacking going on with your heartbreaker bonus armor but you don't need a lot to get that worthwhile just enough 1.3 1.5 million armor and if you're running the memento backpack or the ninja bike backpack then it's pretty easy to get that but i was also thinking maybe we maybe we run bloodsucker you know there's a really nice liquid engineer that was for sale the other day so maybe we make some some use out of that that'd be different because we haven't done that in a while get away from an exotic backpack um and then that would open up the opportunity to what was that other one real quick to use um the catharsis it's a bloodsucker oh yeah i forgot i found this look at this beautiful backpack guys isn't that a beaut i need to make a build around this so it's got alp summit for your heels it came with double crits and blood circle on it you know what i mean that's actually maybe we should start with that that's even better than the liquid engineer because you could put the liquid engineer somewhere else bellstone somewhere else if you wanted it um or we can avoid i could put a red core there and so take off that skill tier um and we still need armor but you could kind of balance it out you could change the core to whatever you want it to be and then let's see here and then we put that because that gives you income and repairs right there so we're, we're making use of that income and repairs you know what's funny is that income and repairs doesn't help vicious cycle i don't know if you knew that but uh yeah it doesn't so keep that in mind what up gray smoker bruce game and see good to see you all back anna what up grumpy in the house holding down the floor what up reaps is that it all the boys including chevy who was first how dare you chevy <laughs> how dare you sick jim in the house what up sicky so this gets that yeah so the income repairs doesn't help vicious cycle it's just a stat just so you know neither does armored regen <laughs> I mean, it kind of does indirectly. It helps you heal faster. The armor regen does. So anyways, so if we run that Alps Summit on the backpack, then we can run incoming repairs. Now I get it that that bell, the Bellstone version is technically a, uh, a better Bloodsucker because you're going to get plus 2% bonus armor for 10 seconds. So plus 2% is the difference really from the regular and non-regular. But it's not really the amount of bonus armor that I'm... Uh, 
that you struggle with really it's more the timer it's the 10 seconds that's what i wish they did i wish that the perfect bloodsucker bumped to 15 seconds that would make that stat better so i'm not really worried about that two percent i mean it's nice to have if i end up running bellstone anyways then might as well but i'm gonna try this i'm gonna try this what up rising reap and so if i do this so if we get some really good heals in here and maybe somehow find a way to get a strong shield now that's the hard part uh because the shield is what's gonna help you purge that that mask um and so it's hard to, i mean the bad those those exotic backpacks really help because they give you two tiers for your shield because you got a blue in the skill um but you know what we kind of hate about this uh, heartbreaker and why we didn't run it last time with the sitar is because it doesn't you can't, you can't pulse <laughs> you know and so we'd have to run excuse me we have to run the um basically the tactician drone which isn't the worst thing actually it could be worse um if we decide to stay with sharpshooter trying to go for the head we, we realized just didn't do wasn't very nice with the stacking that's why we ended up going i'm just not remembering that that's why we ended up going with um striker because the Tar doesn't host so that's kind of a bummer i mean the rest of this still works that's fine um you know what would also be cool instead of bloodsucker is you know what would be even better you know where i'm going anybody Anybody? Can anybody guess what would be better than Bloodsucker? On a high RPM assault rifle for defense. The Devil's Do Backpack. Perfect clutch. So this would allow me to run a lot of reds. It would give us some differentiation too on the build. Um, and play more into our red cores. You can still put a blue core or two, but play more into our red cores. Let's pop that bad boy along with this. And then, uh, let's see, I got a Habsburg one, too. Look at that. Isn't that nice? I mean, we don't need that one, but it sure is good looking. Uh, let's see if I got any others that would be interesting with that talent. It's a nice Bloodsucker Walker. By the way. Which isn't a bad idea if you don't want the regen you can go on the damage side get that blood sucker we'll bring that too and a full um we could run fenris petrov i'm not super excited just about 10 percent more weapon damage but assault rifles have a hard time getting to their crit peak level so Jessica's usually a good idea, especially if we're going to run a brand set, which we might. Which we might. Okay, let's uh, offload a couple pieces, apparently. We need to do that. Okay, let's see. So, all right, we got a backpack. A couple options for backpacks. Let's put on the Cheska one for now. See if we can do a lot of reds. Um, it'd be the catharsis. If we go a lot of reds, that makes the catharsis difficult to run unless we're running a red foundry build, which could be pretty interesting, like a foundry with crits. Ooh, that could be actually pretty cool, don't you think? pretty damn off meta i would say so if we go foundry with crits and then run cheska with clutch and then the catharsis that could be interesting um the downside is the foundry would end up be we'd end up having to run the foundry chest with that setup so the catharsis would have to go i guess that's okay we could run the coyote That'd be kind of fun. That would be a fun build. Um, what up, squad? 
Mr. Khan. Khan, Khan. Yeah, that's right, Atlas. Yeah, you called that, huh? Yeah. I, I mean, we could go Striker. I'm just kind of staying away from Striker at the, at the moment just because it's kind of everybody's been doing that lately. <laughs> I literally just saw like two, three builds back to back from different people posted on consecutively. It was just like, wow, they're almost the exact same build. Four piece striker. But it's a good set. There's nothing wrong with it. But I just want to give you guys something different. You can't be any geek off the street. Oh, you gotta yeah, be handy alerts. with the steel if you know what Those I mean. from people not on the stream. Appreciate you, Razor Flex. Yeah, we have fun, man. Yeah, the community digs it. I dig it. I have fun. This is what I do. You know what I mean? This is how I actually enjoy the game is, is creating these builds and, and making them, you know, making them work, making things work. So let's see here. Quasi Tomo, appreciate the sub there, bro. Um, what's better, unwavering or just bigger numbers with the Dark Winter? Don't look at it with numbers rising, right? You know what I mean? Don't look at the numbers. Look at your time to kill. Look at your time to kill. And the bigger numbers don't necessarily really give you any advantage. Once you meet, a, once you already have a fast time to kill, and I bet you do, okay, then what can make you perform better bigger numbers will will improve your time to kill they will but you i promise you you can't detect it <laughs> you know what i mean uh, you can't detect it it's such a small amount i mean you'd have to count frames in order to detect that time to kill improvement and it and then that means it's insignificant so unwavering it doesn't have to be unwavering, but you know, you can also go like fast hands. But I think when you got the three or four what uh, enemies standing in front of you, cutting down that basically two second reload off the vector is going to be a major advantage. Major. That's what's going to keep you alive. Right. And so not at your bigger numbers. It's going to be you need to you got a fast weapon that spends more time reloading than shooting. So you got to get that reload time done so that you can continuously shoot. Try, um, try like fast hands, steady hands, or unwavering. And I get how unwavering can be annoying because you got to switch. But imagine this. Just think of this as a concept. What if you can merge the vector with the chatterbox? That's kind of what you were doing there, right, with the, the skipping reloads. Or look at it this way. What if you could... Uh, use the vector during golden bullet. What if you can make a golden bullet build? And that's what you'd be doing by eliminating those reloads, right? Auto reloads. And so try just, uh, try this. Try just running fast hands. Make sure you have crits. Go just fast hands. And I promise you, you won't miss any of your damage. <laughs> you know? Like, I mean, look at, I mean, look at what I'm running. I'm running a vector 900 RPMs and with steady hands. You know, and I absolutely love it. And that's because once you meet that damage threshold, everything else is just like, you know, let's let's minimize our diminishing returns and, you know, reallocate that damage to something that'll help me perform better. And especially in those uh, multi enemy situations. And I think that SMGs can I mean, out of cover builds can use it even more than anything, because um reloading is what gets you killed that's where you take the most damage is when you're not shooting when you're not killing maybe we'll build one from scratch here without a gear set because we always have gear sets um and it's mostly because our brand sets aren't that interesting you know don't you just think our brand sets are kind of like yeah I mean, like, if you're going to run a brand set, you tend to just go backpack and chest. And it just almost seems like, yeah, the benefits of a gear set on the other piece is kind of out, outweigh the options you have on your... I mean, what are my options for gloves? So I can run boring contractors. Yay, damn shit armor. We've had that for, like, 10 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or Bellstone or Xena. Yay, armor on kill. But we can get something better off of, like, Hunter's Fury or even 
um, what you call it, Umbra, and even ooh, Umbra would probably be the build. But I keep making Umbra builds because it's got that heals. Let's go Foundry. Let's go Foundry. Okay, I got to go to my other character to to pull some over. Matt, what's going on, brother? So I'm playing a little bit differently today. My setup. I'm. I normally play off my TV, and I'm today. I'm using my monitor. Let's see how well I do when I'm not on 65 inches. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I got a really nice monitor. I got one of those Samsung Ultra Ultra Wide. It's like I don't even know how wide it is. It's as wide as my desk, which is what 48 inches, 36 inches, or something. I don't know. So those real curved, super wide ones. So it's nice because I can have everything in front of me. But I'm rearranging my office right now. So so I'm not using my computer. I mean, my uh, TV. Reorging for the summertime. All right, so let's see. It's been a while since we've run a foundry uh, crit build. So we got some options. Look at those. Boom, boom, boom. I've been saving those. I used to uh, run it lot, like that a lot. It's a good way to go. We'll bring the, we'll bring the chest. Uh, there's a red one, too. Chest faster heals. Um, the chest is pretty valuable for what we're doing, though, so we'll see if we can pull it off. Inventory. I was in the right place, right? Yeah. Let's make sure I didn't push the wrong one. Um. Yeah, there's our foundries. Oh, we're full. So it does, you know, foundry would make uh, the ninja bike a little bit more interesting, too. So we'll see if that ends up being a play. I'll push that one back. Gear sets are, um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Literally, like gear sets are starting to be the thing that I have most of. I mean, my my fourth character is the one that hosts the gear sets, and she's the one that's uh, painfully full. The other ones, I got some wiggle room to kind of move things around uh, between the stash and the character. But this one is technically got more gear than the character can hold, and all the character holds is um, this junk gear sets we haven't done a chameleon build in a while you know we gotta whip that gun out too this red foundry is um making me think about that probably not gonna use a foundry backpack so i think we're good yeah A protected reload build i actually created it i do have a, a protected reload build that i posted and was pretty decent it was actually a uh it's a long time ago i created it it's a uh super 90 one use protected reload on the super 90. because 
the Super 90 um, has a horrible reload, as you can imagine. So just like we were saying, like, you know, that's when you take all that damage is when you're reloading, right? It's when you're most vulnerable. Okay, so where were we? So this does, I mean, I like this, uh, this perfect clutch at the moment, so we're going to stick with that, but the... Um, the foundry is going to give us crazy heals. And so the ninja could be interesting. We're probably going to need crits on everything. To open up something else. I don't know what that is. Something else would be, though. Um, let's see. So I'm going to probably avoid the uh, foundry chest at first. Oops, that's not the one. Foundry crits. There we go. That chest guy really helps. <clears throat> Normally, uh, I'd be worried about even getting through that. Um, we could go... Got even a bellstone, like a red bellstone with obliterate. Wouldn't be bad, right? Pick up even more heals. Or does that make you mad? <laughs> Some people get mad at those kind of things. Um, where is my Grupo? I'm looking for that Grupo. Hold on. Grupo and a Bellstone, technically. Bro, or Bellstone. Um, that Fenris would work too if we want the flat damage, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna need crits on this build, you know what I mean? Uh, especially with the rate it fires. So there's the Bellstone red, and then um, I'm, I am purposely trying to load up extra on heals. A kinetic build could be interesting too. Okay, there we go. There's our Grupo. So that gives us some things to play with. And then do I have an Alps with? I don't think I do. Okay, but we're stuck with the talent. Okay, so that's one thing we can't change because the whole point of the build is to showcase that uh, this weapon is an alternate to the rail splitter and that you don't need the rail splitter. And if you did have it, I would beg you to consider using this version of the CTAR with steady hands. That's going to give you 100% accuracy instead of 50 and 100% stability and then auto reload your mag. And you get there really fast, especially with Striker, which we're not doing right now. But Striker definitely uh, that little, gives you a little edge on your RPM. Okay, so let's see where crit's at. Uh, 58, good, right on. So you need to be at max crits with this. Keep that in mind because of the SPAC back talent requires crits. And so um, make sure you're over 55 if you can. And then, oops, wrong chest. We need the Grupo. I like the, bell, the red Bellstone idea though, right? 
because uh, you got one percent armor region here that pushes you to two plus the heals um and then we're gonna have obliterate and you got crit damage uh 115 it'd be nice if i had crit chance there but let's start with grupo and see how strong we feel and then what do you guys say for specialization gunner get the 10 percent armor on kill on top of that so there we go god damn this guy <laughs> literally ever since they redesigned this area is anybody else experiencing this so ever since they redesigned the base of operations like this computer is here now and that guy is stupid damien snow he can't when you're in your stash he comes and he pushes you into this corner <laughs> they need to fix that it's a literally an issue and then sometimes he's there using it for a while and i can't get out of the corner i'm like ah he's pinching me and oh look another one you see what i'm saying <laughs> So sometimes I get stuck in this corner and I can't get out like right now See that I can't get out because you're in your menu so you don't see him coming and now all of a sudden they push you I mean you can fast travel out or you could just be really patient, right? You can't tuck and roll here <laughs> Is anybody else experiencing this Tony is there are you getting any of this? <laughs> or you got stuck for like three days <laughs> or three times gotcha so i finally got out because she moved you see that so it's super annoying they need to fix that computer they didn't get rid of it okay what were we doing oh skills i think oh specialization so um you know i'm tempted to go to um firewall and pick up more damage because to offset our defense because think about it that's defense and that's defense so if we go firewall we can pick up some offense uh and then because we're obviously going to need some sort of shielding right unless we play tight from cover um or we can go gunner and get the 10 percent armor and kill and just run the regular shield but i don't you know hopefully this is going to give us all the armor and kill that we need so i want to kind of start that way at least so let's Look for, uh, for more damage. I love Firewall when I can, too. Yeah. So let's see. We got assault rifles. Um, yeah. SMGs and shotguns. All right. I think we're good. All right, and then uh, don't forget to put on the right shield when you do that. Sometimes I forget. Um, probably decoy, actually. Go decoy. You could also go healer to make your heals go even faster, which isn't a bad thing. Um, yeah, we'll go. I'm gonna go the damage bonus because see the health like if you look at the shield health if you go to shield health look at you're basically two million and that gives you like a hundred thousand right like whoop de do it's like one bullet <laughs> so i'll just take the damage all right so that's our setup let's go kill something and then we'll tweak her from there what do we got on the map uh assault rifles in the top dna shotties and hannah boo all right yeah so the ninja bike foundry combo could be kind of interesting too I feel like we might be missing out on on that setup especially the way we're running you know what i mean and so because if we run the ninja bike then we can take off a piece of this we would not run that and uh what what kind of possibilities does that open up i don't know 
but we'll definitely explore that too this is right now we're really gonna see how we like the foundry concept and i like it on the chameleon um any fast weapon technically And so it's going to heal you while you're in cover at a percentage of that damage. And then people forget, if you don't know Clutch, Clutch is potentially 99.99999, almost 100% armor on kill. So once you get a kill, it turns it on. There's two parts to it. Everybody kind of reads the first part and says, I'm not interested. But the first part is just kind of a protector to keep you from going down. But that's not what's really special about it. I think what's special about it is the second part, which is um, after you get a kill, every crit beyond that point is going to he heal you up to 100%. And how good it is it depends on um, how much... Ooh, this, this weapon is tight. I I gotta get used to that. Um, how many red cores you have? And you gotta have max crits. Ah, damn it. Oh, that reload is killing me, bro. You see that reload? Literally got me killed. I want to do something about that. Come on, man. You see that reload? What is my reload on this thing? 2.1 seconds? God, it feels slow as heck. I think it's because we've been running handling lately <laughs> on things and our reloads have been like really fast, you know? Oh, I thought it popped my shield. Come on, man. Get me up. He's not gonna do it, is he? Oh, it's that guy. Don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him. That shield is too weak. Yeah, we're gonna go down again. Look, they, the heals are nice as long as you're not taking damage. Because they're fast, but I feel like we're a little too vulnerable to take damage while we're dishing it. Especially when I'm not shooting. It's all relies on us to shoot. Everything does, right? In a funny way. Because our healing, the big chunk of our healing is based off of shooting. And so if we're not doing that, because we're vulnerable and we're kind of dodging bullets instead, then we're not healing beyond what Foundry is doing. And Foundry is only going to give you a percentage.
detecting additional hostile contacts. So, you know, we could go like the um the bonus armor route too if we don't like this. You see those reloads though? Are you seeing those reloads are like really painful. Um, yeah, dark. I mean, true Patriot. It, it's a team build. So yeah, you're going to feel weaker than if you're running striker or heartbreaker or Umbra. I mean, there's not much you could do except for to choose a heavier weapon. You know, which weapon did you choose? I mean, that's the challenge with gear sets, right? Like they, they, they tie you into the four pieces. I would free up. I mean, you got your backpack, the memento. So that's that's decent. Because that's giving you one of those armor cores, right? Yeah, I think we got too much defense on this build, too. So, so something's going to have to get probably at the very least the backpack talent. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's do this. Let's go um, put the Fenris up here real quick. I mean, we already got that. Let me find the better chest piece that we need. Probably the walker. And get the um, damage to armor with it. Or the bellstone, the red bellstone, and get the damage to uh, armor on kill with it. And then that frees up. Probably we can go Picaros and build that shield up. Except I kind of want to add some reload speed in there. Um, but let's start with this. Probably need crit chance now. Yep. Problem losing the Cheska on a gear set piece. We have to swap out all our crit damage for crit chance. So you go, you don't really gain damage. You know what I'm saying? You see what just happened? So we're not really gaining any damage because I lost all that crit damage by losing the Cheska. And if I put Cheska on my chest, that gives us Hasbro, which that sucks. So we don't really win anything. It's just kind of a rearrangement of things. You know, so maybe it's the uh, the foundry that's got to go. All right, let's try this one back where we're going to start. Unless we go Hunter's Fury on this thing. Um... But what I'm looking for is that reload speed, actually, that this kind of gives me. I feel like that'll put this at a good place. And then we're going to get the heals from it, too. Uh, try the um, Kingbreaker. We're probably going to need something a very tanky. I mean, I consider the True Patriot set more of a tank, tank set. It's more of a defensive set. Um, if, I mean, people use it on the final boss in the raid for iron horse as one of the tank options that's how much of a tank it is
I mean, if you're running it solo, then that's the part you might want to consider. Run in a group and use it to power up your team. Or hack into a skill build. That works pretty good, too. I mean, because that's what it is. It's an, it's an ongoing directive, you know? It does, I mean, of course, you don't have to run it that way, but those those uh, Negotiator's Dilemma and True Patriot were developed at the same time, and both of them were, were designed around team buff, team play. And then ongoing directive is is wasn't originally and now is on that same page, too. And then everything else like Umbra, Striker, Heartbreaker, those all are self-empowering. I hate that it doesn't let me fast travel. And if you look at your, if you put on an all red True Patriot and go put on an all red Umbra, Striker, or Heartbreaker, you'll see massive differences. I mean, you probably, you know, seven, somewhere between seven and nine million DPS. And then, you know, Striker could push up to uh, 30. Depending on which weapon you're running. Um, but a good Striker build will be about 20, uh, between 18 and 20. That's a great Striker build. You don't really need 30 million. It's kind of just over the top okay so yeah that felt way too weak and then running the ninja bike doesn't add anything uh, on the offensive side to offset what we We were basically running before. It's kind of a rearrangement of things. Man, they need to leave this computer alone. Look at that. These two people just keep walking. Look at her. She's coming. You going to go use a computer now? You are. <laughs> he just got off and then she's rotating. They're in line for the computer. Is this the line? Is this the queue? Let's get in queue. Are you next? Are you next? Are you next in line? All right. So how do I want to run the C-Tar if I don't want to do Striker? Yeah, like an all red true Patriot. Yeah, I'm just saying for damage per, uh, comparison purposes. Um, I ran a true Patriot build the other day with the doctor's home and it felt pretty good. Try the M1A. You know, it gives you a look at ammo capacity. It gives you, you know, um, and then more uh, larger magazine. You know, that's all sustained damage and you're probably looking for burst, you know, um, to offset that. And the amplified damage is gonna help you a little bit, but it's not mega amounts of amplified damage kind of a collective a help in a collective damage scenario because you know what is the maximum like 12 percent if you're running the backpack and if you think about it, if you got four people shooting at the same target and he uh he receives 12 percent amplified damage from all four of those uh, people shooting then it adds up a lot So the interesting thing is it's more it's going to take more than just an all red build so uh, you know we're going to need some assistance on like on the damage side from something because like i could run like a, a red bellstone and a red murakami and uh and then crit it all out but i don't know i just don't feel like that's enough and i feel like the standard builds god jesus christ <laughs> 
I don't even want to be in here. I keep getting bumped into. I. <laughs> Anyways, so like. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I'm so, like on the assault rifle class. It's specifically assault rifles I'm talking about here. Like when it comes to assembling a build, like, I mean, your options are just so limited without a gear set. It's just vanilla. You just end up with the, the same old build, you know, there's just nothing else to put on. You got Fenris or you got crits and the contractor's gloves. And I feel like if we go like an all red defensive brand set, then that's basically going to put us in the same position, except we do open up some more slots. Let me see if it, that's not the right one. I need one with crit damage on it. Where is my contractors with crits? That one. You know what I mean? So if I go with foxes and um, contract, there's nothing wrong with that. But then I don't want the ninja bikes because that's going to give me... Well, I mean, weapon handling is not bad because we got a bad reload. Accuracy kind of sucks. So I don't want to run that. I'd rather run the walker down here. Something like that. Get the damage to armor. Or... Um, we could run a Providence with a different configuration. I mean, we got a Bellstone, so I mean, that's technically our armor on kill right there. And then we could run Gunner for another 10%. And then Holster. I'm thinking the um, Picaro's for a stronger shield. And they give us an armor attribute. Yeah, I remember when I had perfectly measured. I used to like it. It was my favorite gun at that time, actually. Morakai, what up? Yeah, well, they used to be my favorite gun with perfectly measured on it. It was super nice. So here's this setup. Um, we don't have to run this backpack at all, actually. But that does give us the arm on kill. And then some damage to armor. A little helpful. It's a little helpful. You know what I mean? And then up here, we could run one piece of hot shots and get 30% handling, although we got a lot of handling that's supposed to be coming in. But it's not all handling. So for the mask. I guess we can go Fenris on the ma oh, one of these pieces. It doesn't have to be the mask. Uh, that would give us a faster reload speed, too. And that is my biggest complaint. Um, did we have a finished chest, didn't we? Where is it? There it is. Oh, there's one with obliterate. Perfect. Okay, we'll take that one. So Fenris chest, and then I'll put the bellstone on the mask. And that should help with the reload. So we got 10%. So there's 20% reload speed there, and then 10% weapon handling. That's 30% reload speed. 1.6. Way better. We were at 2.1 before, and I could feel it. That makes me happy. Okay, uh, crit-wise, we're max crit chance. Okay, that's good. Um, so we could roll this to crit damage. Perfect. All right, and the mask. Oh, we're at max crit chance because of the stupid mask. That's why we're at max crit chance. But here, I think we bring in the bellstone, maybe, and get the armor on kill. Then I can run Gunner to pick up the other 20. Or you could just keep it at 10. Just run Gunner. And what would that option be then? What option would we have for the mask then? Right on, Scale. Keep lurking, bro. Lurk in peace. <laughs> That's what we should, we should come up with. That, that little emo. Lurk in peace. <laughs> I 
So anyways, this is the making of a build, but I'm going to stop myself because I'm just thinking about it and it'd be like, yeah, even if it works, it just wouldn't be as fun as a three piece Umbra with a two piece striker. I ain't just going to do that. I know it's been done before, but like on this weapon setup, it's just we're going to get the weapon handling off of strikers in addition to the RPM. And I kind of like that. Kind of do. I'm going to stop myself because this is just kind of going down, you know, vanilla lane. We know how that build is going to perform in the end, right? It's going to work. And it's just going to be all right. <laughs> I don't want weapon handling there, but I don't have a choice. Let me see if I have another striker at crit. Yeah, I'll take that one. I could put Umber here. Maybe. Take one armor core, maybe. All right. And then we just need the chest. All right. This is just going to be a more fun build uh, to showcase the weapon. And then otherwise, it's going to be striker. I was really good with it. I had fun with the striker one. No doubt. And then the umber chest, I'll run red. And so I like the the reason why, uh, oops. The reason why I like the uh, umbra is because it comes with heals. That's why I choose umbra in front of striker. Striker will give you that four piece damage, but then you're gonna have the, um, you'd have to run the striker chest and you can get all those stacks to have to deal with. But the weapon's fast. Um, if we ran, this is pretend we ran a, uh, the striker chest for a minute. What would we put in the other two if it wasn't Umbra? We wouldn't want it to be Umbra. I mean, it gives you crits and reload speed, but three piece striker with a heartbreaker wouldn't wouldn't work. I mean, you could go one piece heartbreaker, one piece. Um, that wouldn't be bad. We could do that. The downside is that you, you're stuck with the striker chest. You'd have to be happy with that. <laughs> but you could go one piece heartbreaker, one piece hot shot, and that would be that would be interesting. Um, or forget the heartbreaker. You can go uh, system corruption and hot shot, or bellstone and hot shot. But let's avoid the chest right now. All right. And then let's see crit rise. I, and I like Umbra for its crit boost, by the way. Forty six. Fifty two. All right, 58, 105. So 205% crit damage there. Um, let's go to run gunner. We're not gonna have less options here, so we'll go shield health. And there we go. All right, let's start there, and then we'll figure out which direction we want to go. Striker, umber, striker, umber. So, like, part of what I'm avoiding here, just so you guys know, is like, let me build up my pull up my build list. Is that I got a, a content schedule? So, of all these builds that we've created, like, over the last month or two, and uh some of these builds haven't been well they, none of these builds have been published yet 
And so, um, like we got the GR9 with Umbra. We have the Slepner. Um, I think that's on the striker platforms. The safety distance setup we did, which was a striker setup also. We have the good times LMG on an Umbra platform. You know what I mean? So these gear sets are getting a lot of attention, but for certain weapons to not use the gear sets is possible, but and it's not a matter of survivability. It's a matter of luster. You know what I mean? And so some of these gear sets bring in a shine like Umbra brings in the, that crazy reload speed you know and if you sometimes if you don't use these gear sets right now <clears throat> for cert for mostly the rpm weapons i gotta say like for for rifles shotguns for rifles shotguns and snipers i think you got a lot more builds to, to have fun with i do i feel like for assault rifles lmgs and smgs it's going to be the same thing over and over again. Striker, Umbra, Heartbreaker, Hunter's Fury. Striker, Umbra, Heartbreaker. You know what I mean? But for rifles, shotguns, and marksmen, they bring in so much base damage into the picture that that's where your creativity can enter. But if I ran an assault rifle or an LMG or a, uh, an SMG without using the gear set, awesome. we're going to end up having to min-max it. It's just going to be a min-max situation because you're going to be like, I don't have enough slots to get what I'm looking for. You know? Unless you're going, like, way off meta. You know what I mean? But if you want that power and that defense, it's just like you're going to have to... You're going to make... So you have to make choices is all you're going to end up doing. You know? Choices that we've already made before a thousand times. Yeah, so I think that's this, that's a that's an interesting thing because these folks are the most popular weapons that we have to to choose from, especially in the assault rifle category. So we need more assault rifle setups. Yeah, it's way better. I mean, you see that, right? Like way better. That's the luster I'm talking about, right? Because remember, we got this uh, handling on the gun, right? I mean, now I feel the lesser. I mean, I can play this all day. This is actually the first build we created with the Ninja Bike Backpack. It was actually the first idea I had too. I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. And I wasn't, so, at that time, I wasn't really that impressed with it. And I found that it works with some weapons and not others, you know. Somebody behind us somewhere. some heels yeah it feels great uh oh I'm on on everything I remember before I was like oh that painful reload it sucks and now that reload is lightning fast
Oh, I let my stats decrease. You gotta watch that. Yeah. The shots on are nice. That's what I'm noticing. I'll take it. Yeah, I have the apartment. That's a nice gun. Also one of my favorites. The apartment's really good with versatile. Let's try that one of these days. That's where they coming from. Oh my god, you're fucking squirmy. I swear, don't you guys feel like the faster you are, the faster they are? So you you boost your RPMs, they run faster? I, I think it's like directly tied to your RPMs, their running speed. The faster your gun is, the faster they run. If we could only run a scope, huh? Somebody's getting people al alive. Got a medic out there. Let the medic, yeah. Stop the medic. He's too far away for his gun. Jesus Christ, it's almost too fast sometimes. I, I felt like I painted a circle around this body. Good healing though. Got us what we needed. Man, I swear those backpacks are um, magnetic. <laughs> Can't help but to hit that weak point. I didn't see you there. How are you getting an angle on me? God damn it. That's annoying. Yeah, the good times, I think, is what you're talking about, right, Anna? Yeah, pretty good. That was actually our original build for it. Did my, the first build I made for the good times was uh, the negotiators. Works pretty good.
It's almost too fast. I might want to swap a couple of pieces here. So the speed thing, I mean, it's a lot of fun. I think we might have thought this the first time too. Uh, it is a lot of fun, but when you miss, you miss a lot. <laughs> like what is our RPMs? I don't even know what they are. They're probably 1500. Maybe we got 30% more than what you see there. So very fast weapon and it is a lot of fun and I liked it. I like it, but I think we could probably get rid of strikers RPM. Jew the gamer, what up? Thanks for rating, bro. Welcome in. So let's take a look at uh, that, that those two pieces and see what else could we do. Doing good, man. Just having fun. Catching up on some stuff with the peeps. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline. Um, guys, they just haven't announced it yet. And we're under NDA, so we can't talk about it. But, uh, yeah, there's stuff to look forward to. Probably sooner than you would expect. All right. So let's see. I so I guess these two pieces, like we could toy with these and see if we can bring some something more interesting in here. Like, what if we brought in more hot shot? Would that be over the top? I think we ran that and liked it. Um, so one piece of system corruption could be interesting, or a bellstone. Two piece hunter's fury for 20% armor on kill. That's sort of like running. You get more, you get more. I've seen people do two pieces of hunter's fury for that armor on kill, but you'd get more out of just running one system corruption and a bellstone, or even running Uzina and a bellstone because you're going to get re, uh, regen and extra stats. So, two piece hunter's fury on the setup wouldn't really be a thing. And then, if you're thinking two piece, uh, a heartbreaker you're better off with just one piece heartbreaker and then run the other one as hot shots oh thanks on lethal appreciate you the cavalier gear set i mean it's just another foundry it's a it's a found it's a foundry that gives your team benefits that's all it is right it's a makeshift repairs. They remixed makeshift repairs. They remixed the, the, the foundry build. It's all it is. That's all I see. So take whatever you get your foundry builds and turn them into cavalier builds. And it's just an option. You know, it's an option. What do you want to give your team? Um, so because you're going to get well, hazard protection and repair skills. So that's just for you. And then the, the four piece talent does that whole thing, right? transfers over I, mean, I don't even have it by heart um but transfers the hazard protection to your team or some weird stuff right but as far as like benefit i maybe have a couple of builds in mind for it that could be interesting but the foundry being so close to it see look makeshift repairs it, it you receive the damage and then repair through it at crazy amounts, right? Where the uh, Cavalier set just gives you resistance to that same damage. So it's a little more proactive versus reactive, except there's conditions to it. And Foundry, there's not. There's no conditions to Foundry, which is why it's nice. Just stand there. Just be, log into the game as the condition to Foundry. And then with Cavalier, it's like, you gotta be out of cover for, it's like an Umbra. It's like an Umbra Bulwark build, basically, without any offense. So, I mean, I don't think it's bad, but I just think that it will be somewhat limited. You know, uh, it'd be a nice option, though. I'm glad to have more options. So, I mean, I'm excited to get my hands on it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hazard protection and then um, repair skills. I mean, I like both those things.
So uh, the holster, I'm thinking. Um, let's see if I have the red ones I'm looking for. I think a little bit of armor on kill would help us play faster. So I'm looking for one of those. Which is probably going to be the glove. Um, give us a little more confidence out of cover. I don't have any of those with me. Come on. Must uh, move things around to save room. You know how it is. I mean, I guess I could put on um, kind of just system corruption as a placeholder somewhere. Oh. And I guess I think this is going to be there. And then let's see if I got that umbra here. Damn it, I don't. So we're going to have to take a headshot damage there, I guess. Don't even have that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just do that. Fuck it. Okay. There we go. I'm just going to run this for a quick run just to see what I think about it. But we have a chance to make it better. Uh, but that gives us... That pushes us to 25% armor on kill. And then we'll still have the approximate same crits. So uh, I just don't have um, the right piece here at the moment or there. So that will still be at 200% crit damage when I reroll those pieces. Um, and I'd probably even get more because I'm probably actually going to run like a, um, a Bellstone instead of System Corruption and push us down to 20% armor and kill, get the regen instead. But let's just quickly test this and see if we like this combo. Basically pulling off strikers, RPMs, and handling. So we're going to gain in handling. So we're going to win on the handling side. So we're going to lose the RPMs, trading off for more armor on kill. But we're so fast. I think we're, we're going to be okay. in annoying places. I just got sniped with that shotgun. Oh my god. Nice roll. Kind of makes you wonder, does anybody else like, what's the point of having um, good aim and handling modifiers if they're just going to do these crazy cartwheels on you and then stop mid cartwheel <laughs> you know what i mean like why do i even why do i even bother <laughs> obviously when they're walking straight at you it's a little easier but Oh, there's 
guy right there. Grenadier, I'm guessing. Yeah, if we struggle to get utility out of those additional pieces, you see, if you force it with the ninja bike, which is something that you can do pretty easy, you know what I mean? You're like, oh, striker doesn't work. You know, okay, we'll put this, we'll put that. Then you might just consider taking off the ninja bike, you know? Right? And so, because we can, because... Like, we got pretty good handling. We added more, and it feels great. I mean, actually, the build feels good. It does. I'm not saying it doesn't. But, you know, what if I put on... Um, you know what? It'd be pretty... I'm just thinking about this. It'd actually be pretty cool to run the Umber backpack with this. And we never get to do that. And it's a really good backpack. You get what I'm saying? Because... It's not what is not all we did technically by putting on. Oh damn you! So let me show you what I mean. Like so, we put on system corruption for fifteen percent armor on kill, and it's working great. Don't get me wrong. But what if we just ran the umber backpack, and then that'll give us a different look on the backpack versus clutch and bloodsucker, right? And the backpack is really good. It really is. Actually, I'm excited every time I have a chance to do it. The question is... So if we're running the striker... And the striker chest is... I mean, sorry, not the striker, but the umber chest is also really good. Do you think we could get an umbra... Um, catharsis build to work because that would be cool i would love to figure out a cathar catharsis with that because that would give you um obviously you get the damage with the catharsis but you also get the the healing in and out of cover i mean of course we could just go striker i mean uh coyote's mask also would, would just work that'd be an easy one Come on. Yeah, I think that's the next move. Because I'm looking at it, it's just like, yeah, so I mean, everything we have does make sense. But when it comes to, like, what it's effectively doing is, well, we added on more handling, but we don't really need it, even though that's nice. It is nice, and I can feel it. But, you know, we got the 100% there. We're good. The, the weapon's pretty stable. So we could get rid of that and get rid of the 15% armor on kill it does help. It allows us to play faster. But if we were getting basically twice as much regen per second when we're in cover, which we have to get in cover anyways, that, that backpack is really valuable that way. And then, so what I would be looking for if I ran the backpack or some damage modifier offsets. And the cool thing about the catharsis is it does provide that for you. It gives you both, right? It gives you the offense and the defense. 
assuming you take damage, right? And so, so the, the catharsis doesn't always work. So if we can attract damage with the shield, then it will. But the shield's got to be strong enough to do that. And so I'm thinking maybe we run the um, the Picard's holster so we can put on the armor core and not feel like we're missing too much. And we're not because this thing does give you a lot of crit damage. Remember, we're at 200% crit damage more. No, we're at 200% crit damage is where we are. Yeah. Hey, Tony. Yeah, let's try that. Right, let's grab our gear real quick. See if we got anything good. Brazo, skill, haste, and tamper proof. Yeah. Detected. Hostile supply convoy. Heavily armed. If I only had the gear slots. That's how you know you're getting into the back half of the season. Your backpack is full again. Oh, that's a good Sokolov. I'm farming some Sokolov pieces. I got rid of all my Sokolov a while ago. And I think I got rid of one too many. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think it's good to have, like, when it comes to Sokolov, at least, like, one good chest piece. And maybe one somewhere else, too, like a mask or a holster. You don't need a lot of Sokolov, though. Okay, so... Um... Yeah, I think I gotta go get that backpack. Oh, you're getting people some Regulus projects. Good job, Skeletor. Regulus for you. Regulus for you. Yeah, the Pestilence, Brandon, is... is interesting, right? Like, I feel like the Pestilence kind of gets to a point where it can only be so good. You know what I mean? It's like... Just some of these weapons that are like that, you and every now and again when they give us new gear, I mean, it could crack open and another build, but a lot of these don't need too many iterations, you know? It's just like, you got a good build for it? There you go. Uh, let's take that one, I guess. I'm going to bring an armor option, too. Yeah. We need to make another chameleon build pretty soon here. So let's be sure to do that. I'll put that on the list. It's been a minute since we've done that. And I love the chameleon. So good for uh, heroic content, especially I really like it in heroic content. Put it on like a striker or even a number. They both feel great. I don't think we created one in season 11. I think the last time we did it was the beginning of season 10. Mm, okay, let's see if we can get the catharsis on this and get it to make sense.
Yeah, some people really hate. It is a love-hate thing. Some people don't like the chameleon. They hate it. You know? <laughs> it's funny. Some people, it's sort of a... Some people are kind of snobby about it. You know? They're like, oh, the chameleon's so weak. And blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. Think about it like... Especially if you think about it like a, an SMG more. I think it'll... It'll click for you. Compare the chameleon in your mind or in your build to the vector, the dark winter. That's where you should be comparing the chameleon against. You know, don't compare it against the kingbreaker. It's not, it's like, they're not even the same weapon. It's not really an assault rifle. You know, they just call it an assault rifle. But... It... It plays, um, it's an amazing SMG is my point. Like, if you just think about it like an SMG, then all your dreams will come true. <laughs> you know. It'd be cool if we could remix exotics, components, and mods. I mean, attributes and mods. I would love to be able to do that. At least the attribute. I think they're considering it. That would make weapons like a whole new... That would give us a whole new class of weapons. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to catharsis. And by doing so, I want to make sure I got a little bit of extra uh, armor to get the shield up. And so what I'm going to do is run the Picaros down here. With the crit damage. Cool. And then we're going to take this off and put on Umbra. Which is not where it needs to be. Which is that one. There we go. Oh. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna move a couple other pieces over. Gonna have to go back through and clean stuff out tonight, I guess. Look at this headhunter with Alps too, by the way, I got. This is another build I need to create around. So it's got headshot damage and repair skills already on it. And of course, Alps gives you 20% repair skills. And then I could put a red core there. Ooh. All red max repair skill build and then put like repair skill mods with incoming repairs uh, Reformation on the weapon talent That'd be a good highlight for you guys We'll call that a reformation build really I'll add that one to the queue um, Reformation Reformation is a good talent, too. Um, I just, you know, I just end up choosing preservation. But reformation is 30% repair skills. And preservation works even when your drone isn't up. So, okay, um, there. Close enough? Delete a couple things here. And then we'll reroll. So you do want to play into your shield with this setup because you want that shield to take damage. So that's why I've pushed it here. So that's a tier four. We could still run technician if we want the additional, but see if this gets her done. So we need one more crit mod. There we go. 93. So we'll be able to push that up a little bit higher. There we go. So we'll be at 205% crit damage. It's, that's healthy. We got 100% with handling. So we got everything we need and crazy heals. Crazy heals. So we're, we we doubled our healing. Um, and we're going to get heals from this too. So this, <laughs> um, and I, I, so I kind of want to put more healing on. The reason why is because I want that shield... Um, I mean, we could also put the deflector, but it's same but different. 
Instead, of, so I don't want the decoy because I want the bullets to actually come to me. If that makes sense, and the decoy can still get you out of some bad scenarios, so it's not a bad thing to run. But I want those bullets to come to my shield. So I wish my shield was a little bit stronger, but um, let's see how it feels out there before we start adding more armor cores. But that's possible to do. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it really is, yeah, the chameleon. So the chameleon, let's talk about that. It's a really good weapon. If you think about it from a SMG perspective and play at those ranges, those stacks happen, they come and go really fast because, you know, you're at point blank and, you know, you might not like its its weapon handling, its uh, fire uh, bloom, uh, which is an accuracy thing. But if you're playing close, it's really a non-issue. And it's fast, it's 900 RPMs. And so that means it pairs up nicely with Striker and Umbra, both that give you RPMs, both enhancing your stacking capabilities. What up, Dragon? Yeah. I mean, there's no real advantage by reclassifying it as a an assault rifle. So I don't know why they did that. There's no advantage except you can run it with Fenris. I mean, you know what I mean? Or a Heartbreaker, I guess. <laughs> you know? So you can, but that's just not that big of a deal. You know? All right. Let's go take some damage while we... See if we can catch these guys on them. They're crazy acrobats. So look at how fast we just took stacks on our shield. We gotta get out of here though. Feeling good about that 30% damage right there. So there's somebody back here. Oh, there he is. Armor staying up. Are we running gunner? Maybe we don't want to run gunner. You know? Maybe we should get rid of that armor on kill. Ah. Jesus Christ. That had some... Mick Jagger moves, you know? Okay, look at that healing. Look at that healing. That's insane. <laughs> That's why we love that backpack, for real. Such a good backpack. Gets you right back in the fight. I want to see how much it could take. Maybe a little protection from elites would be nice too, huh? Get rid of the gunner. I gotta think about that. I gotta think about that. Um, so if we, because if we run firewall, we'll get better shield mods, more damage. Because I don't think we need armor on kill. Although I like the ammo regen thing on a fast build.
I don't even think we were using our fixer, were we? <laughs> yeah, so I mean that would be even better heals. We got the reload speed, so and the RPM, so Gunner's not helping us a ton there. So Gunner does give you that as a secondary benefit, but we don't really need that either, right? That's what Umber brings to the table. Umber is sort of like Gunner in a way, isn't it? You got the heals, you got the reload speed, you got the RPMs. So it really does give you the option to not run Gunner. And then we get more damage, which will be fun. Um, we could also run Technician and get a, a stronger shield. Ooh. That's what we want to do. Technician, guys. Put on the Artificer Hive. And then run some, maybe some protection from Elites. And that'll allow us, our shield to be really strong. Yes. Because time to kill is not a problem. It's just that you just want to be able to uh, stand out there and take damage to your shield. Out of breaking. Yeah, yeah. That's where we're going. Now to make the build even more unique, right? Because you don't run technician with your umber every day, do you? But it's a, um, but I'm, but what I'm really doing is getting you to hopefully ask that question. Like, am I getting anything out of gunner on whatever your build is or whatever it is? Maybe it's not gunner. Maybe it's sharpshooter or maybe it is technician on that one, but, but so we got our heal. But it's our shield, right? You see that? So our shield was risky. But the heals were there. But our shield was good. If our shield broke, we could have died because, you know, for some reason I miss every bullet, even if the enemy's standing in front of me. Look, we got another purge. Yeah, and there's our shield. So, yeah, I think that's what we need to do. Um, I mean, firewall is still an option, too. So I'm not saying no to firewall because that would give you more damage um, when they're in the cone of death. Um, and it also gives you stronger mods for, like, health and active regen. But our damage is pretty nice. So I'm thinking, like, if I can find a way. So we don't need the fixer drone, as you could tell. Right? So that's kind of what made me think about uh, technician is because we don't really need to fix your drone. And so I was like, oh, I don't really need to fix her. But I don't want to decoy because I want the damage to come inward. So. So my shield. Uh, so my mask procs. And it didn't proc a lot, but it proc just amount. The, just enough where I felt really good about it. You know? But I feel good about him running it. Because, you know, you can run that catharsis mask and feel like it's never kicking in. It's like, do your job, bro. <laughs> you can deduct your pay. Do I sound anything like Keanu Reeves when I say, Keanu Reeves when I say that? Bro, remember the old Keanu Reeves? <laughs> the surfer Keanu Reeves? Where's this guy? I'm a much more mature Keanu Reeves fan than I am a s surfer Keanu Reeves fan. Bill, can you believe he was in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure? I mean, what? <laughs> That's the same guy? That's John Wick?
John Wick. Yeah, has anybody seen this newest one? I haven't seen that yet. Okay, so we're going to uh, buff that shield a little bit and then start toying around with some protection from elites because if you add that on top of your crazy heals, then it'd be good. Even if we just put one on. Uh, yeah, I do love Point Break. That is classic. Did you see the new... What do you think about the new Point Break too? The, the remake of it? I mean, I wasn't a big fan of the actor they chose, but it was good otherwise. Um, I like the squad and the type of activities they were doing was really interesting. Okay, so technician is going to give us a skill tier, okay? So this is what's going to happen. We're going to get a skill tier, so we're going to make the shield stronger just by having that, right? Because we're at a tier 4 right now. So it's going to push that to a tier 5, and then we're going to get the artificer to heal the shield, increase its efficiency. And then we got repair skills. That's going to give our artificer stronger repairs for the shield. And we don't need armor on kill because we're running this crazy backpack that gives us crazy heals. And we got more heals coming out of that. And we weren't using our fixer. And I don't want the decoy. So I feel like this is a good little... Um, not much you need to do here, really. With these mods, but... Let's do it for the practice. <laughs> all right. I mean, that's basically all we need to do. And then, um, so nothing's changed damage-wise. We just lost 10% armor on kill for a stronger shield. So now we're at a tier 5 shield. And we get the, the repairs, skill repair at 24%. And then it's going to buff the shield, which will help its regen. Um, so let's start by taking off this crit damage stat and putting on one protection from elites here just one right now and then we'll just run it like that so that we're just shy of 200 percent crit damage now thinking about this 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 because if i run a cheska down here i mean we might Let's, we're going to compare it here in a second. Let me see if I have the Cheska. See which is a better way to run. Cheska with an armor core, you know what I mean? Um, there we go. We got it. Okay, so let's go test this real quick. We're going to swap in and out that, that holster and see which one gives us more damage. Because now we're at the damage leveling. The more damage I can squeeze out of the, the build and the more protection from elites I can run. So what I'm doing is activating the mask by damaging myself. And that's our crazy heals. All right, that's close enough. All right, and then um, let's put this on invulnerable. Charge up. You step out. I think I saw four twenty two. Yeah, okay, now I'll swap this out. So where we are here, uh, 5893. So we go Cheska here. So then I can shift off some crit chance to crit damage. 60. Let's 
still at 60, wow. Um, I don't got anything else to move. Let me see if that backpack is, let's see how much over we are. Crit damage, 56. Ooh, we're right on the edge. Okay, so we're over by 2%, I'll take it. So, that's cool. All right, let's charge that bad boy up. So 424, I think is all we gotta get over. So, let's see if this does better than that. It's about the same. But it looks like the Brazos is more benefit because then you can get skill haste on top of that. And you're also going to get a buff uh, to your non crit damage too because of the red core. So. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's technically a little bit less also. So Brazos is more damage and more benefit secondary benefits outside of damage so the push to crits didn't outperform it all right crit let's see where we are crits rise now Fifty-eight, one hundred five. All right, so, um, well, I think the let me take this off. Reset the crits. Ninety-three. Okay, yeah, good. So one hundred ninety-three. He was in Paula Abdul's fits. <laughs> really? I didn't remember that. I mean, Keanu Reeves and Paul Abdul's videos. Was he a backup dancer? <laughs> Don't tell me he was a backup dancer. Oh, that's hilarious. The things you do when you're a young actor, I guess, huh? Remember when Tupac was in the backup dancer for the for Humpty Hump? So here's, I always find the snitch here for uh, Endurex if you're looking for him. There he is right there. I always find him here. Like every other <laughs> session. He's there every day for me, actually. This should be cool. Like it carried over the damage uh, from the testing range on the on the mask. You see that? That's nice. Let's see if we can sneak in here. Hostile supply convoy nearby. Back, back, boy, back. Get out of that ditch. I don't like having that guy at a higher elevation than me. Come here. right there whoops
Where you at, big boy? Uh, in the corner hiding, huh? See if he comes out. <clears throat> nope, you're gonna be stay there, huh? Gotta shoot him in the hands, I guess. In your face, huh? Got right up in there. Yeah, that shield's. I mean, that mask is popping a lot. That's nice. Detecting additional hostile contacts. Not a plumber. Damn, he's fast. I couldn't get him with this are all these RPMs. Yeah, I feel like we could use probably a little bit more damage. The time to kill waffles a little bit because of, um, 
really it's sort of the shield thing in a funny way because it keeps the shield has uh more survivability keeping us out of cover longer which is making me push the limits to the bottom part of umbra stacks um and so i'm wondering like if i compensate a little bit by taking off an armor core now that we got stronger heals maybe just like one I can do that. Yeah, we can. So we'll just a little chance there, though. We got chance everywhere already. I guess I could put this to chance. There we go. Push it down to 1.3. That's usually a better place to be anyways. It's the shield, though, we want to watch, right? But we're not totally relying on a shield. It's just a really nice way to attract uh, the mask stacking. I mean, I actually rather play without the shield, but it's just that with the catharsis, no shield, no stacks, no stacky stacky. But if we wanted to get rid of it, easy swap to the coyote's mask, I guess. Right, so everything else is, should be the same. So let's see how we do with this minor tweak. Because I, I, in the end, I'd rather have protection, really, because he's detecting me back here. Oh, it already feels better. I wish my guy did Kung Fu. This game would be so much cooler if we had some Kung Fu moves in here. Just like a fucking roundhouse kick every now and again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not like a lot, just, a, just every now and again, you know? Watch the heal here. Yeah, that's nice. Very nice. Yeah, that brought it back in balance, actually. Small change. Damn. Do I gotta get right phone by like every single one? Here's our heels here. Got 
That she's so fucking dodgy, it's annoying. Oh, there's another one back there. That guy overstayed his welcome, for sure. <laughs> that purple guy. Oh, I caught on fucking fire. And I can't steer! You can squirt it again. Wow. You know? Then you can heal him, pop him faster. Heals. Ooh, I missed a lot in the end there. Get a little trigger happy. Especially when the gun feels good, you know? Shield's holding up pretty good. You know, it's not invulnerable, but it feels like it's just about enough. Of course he got away, fucker. Back up, buddy. Hold still. Shooting around corners, are we? Just finish him, guys. It's one guy. Supply room access unlocked. Hostile broadcast picked up. Oh, what a nice vacation. Yeah, I got warm around here last few days. It's like summer just showed up one day.
It's all good. Yeah, that means more yard work, though. Huh? So we're playing into the oh this whole time we didn't have okay we did I was gonna say I thought I didn't have a mod we're playing into the Umbra backpack and the Citar was steady handed basically it's a rail splitter build without using the rail splitter and so we did this like a couple of weeks ago where we tested the rail splitter versus the Citar with steady handed and found that steady handed brought way more benefit and so at the time I ran a really good striker build. And it was really fun, and we were just destroying with it. But I thought to make an alternate build as well. So that's sort of where we are. Um, what I'm thinking is I need to get another crit chance. <clears throat> where are we at? 58. What I'm trying to do is strip red cores for protection from elites. Let's head over to the... Um, the castle, castle, castle. I'm sorry, strip blue cores for protection from elites. I said that backwards. So take off a blue core and then put on a protection from elites in its place. Because we are, uh, we're healing so fast. I don't, the blue core resistance isn't helpful except for the shield. And so. Uh, so I'm trying to find that balance between protection from elites, which also helps the shield. And damage. And armor, of course. So I think if I get down to... Maybe one point, see if I can push this to 1.1 and add protection from elites instead. In order to do that, I need to make sure I got the crit chance here, so... Let's see if I have a holster ready. I mean, it's got crit damage, but. I realize it's the same piece, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let's take this one, delete the other one. So where can I put crit chance? The chest, I guess, or the backpack. All right, so, and then by adding that, what I'm gonna do is put on some protection from elites here, and then that should drop our crit chance, and then we gotta uh, add crit chance on that chest. Just sh so basically just shifted some things around. So that pushes our shield down to a tier three and with the artificer and then protection from elites to help the shield. So let's see how that does. Yeah, so the problem with me in the summer around here is that, um, you know, I have to run the air conditioner in my office so it doesn't get really hot because it gets really hot really easy. And I'm talking like hot, hot because I'm in a detached structure, detached office. And so it's not on central circulated air. So and so basically it can turn into a hot box if I don't run in an air conditioner and it gets so really hot in here. And so that creates background noise, which isn't very good for streaming or making vids. So, um, it adds a lot of challenges to heat. So what I got to do is what I'm doing right now, actually, why I'm partly rearranging is cause I got to add more soundproofing so that I can keep the air conditioner on the whole time without adding background noise. Which is easier said than done. 
All right, let's see if this works. They love to go behind this fence. Oh. See? See? They love it back there. Good, good, good. So far, so good. Power and uh, damage wise. Is that one of these? Another guy back there, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I like it so far. What the fucker. I hate that they get up there, right? Gotta get her off that tower. I'm foamed. Again, foam, foam. It's always a fucking foam with these guys. Fuck. Ah, oh, come on, that was fast enough. Such bullshit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, I took the punch? Oh, fuck you. Uh, you saw that, right? Like, he was going for the, uh, let me heal up from this one. For the NPC, and he, I got the punch instead. Grenadier. Man, I think they're... I, I'm not kidding, though. I think they're really stepping it up on the status effects, man. They must be prepping for year five. There's a lot they don't tell us. That's a really good time to go right there. There's a lot, a lot they don't tell us, man. I'm telling you. They do shit to this game, and it is not on any known issue board or anything like that. But I swear, just like playing this game daily, you guys probably notice this too if you're a regular and you've been playing for a long time, you'll notice the little changes. But I think they ask, they ask these questions like this, like how do we keep the power creep under control? And then somebody else responds, well, I think we should be more creative about it than just coming up with new gear and stuff like that. The other guy's like, yeah, it's probably a good idea. What are you thinking? He's like, hazard protection. Give them more hazards that they have to deal with. And you know what else makes me think that? Because isn't that one of the changes that they did to the Descent game mode in PTS Phase 2? People were saying, oh, it's too easy, it's too easy. What did they do? They added more hazards. And they removed some of the capabilities of bypassing those hazards. So you're forced to play with the hazards. You know, and so I think that's the devs. Obviously, it's a way of, of improving difficulty, but I think they're doing it in the open world, too, to keep from uh, scope creep. I mean, from damage creep. But, because I've been noticing, I mean, for weeks now, so it's not, like, brand new, but I've been noticing for weeks that all of the factions seem to have, like, increased status effects. Uh, like, the amount of people that are putting them down is basically what I'm saying. 
More fire grenades are being thrown. More riot foam rushers. Oh, great. Now I gotta go fetch that gear. Oh, and it was not worth it. I don't know. I mean, you never really could tell because uh, you never officially know because unless they tell you, which is why I think it's easy for the devs not to tell us because it's hard to measure that, right? How are you going to measure that? Because it's supposed to be random, but it doesn't feel like it's random. And it's really interesting to me because that's one of the gear set that they're bringing is, is the Paladin, you know, or Cavalier now, which is going to buff the team with hazard protection. Which counters that, of course, if somebody's running that set. This feels really good right here, this setup. Feels like it's got a, 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 the time to kill that we need and just enough resistance. You're not like overly resistant, but you heal in so fast, it's okay. You know what I mean? And so we got the two protection from elites mods. Um, we're at, 175 100 200 and i don't know where we're at but some sort of crazy damage <laughs> but if we think about the fact that the catharsis is nullifying its armor core with the 30 percent damage sometimes so it'd be like plus 15 is like having one extra core and that's doing it too we're basically running if you think about it that way we're basically running an all red build because that replaces the blue core, and that replaces the blue core, plus 15. But if you want to average it out to 15, you could just say the damage replaces the blue core. That's, that's fair. So we're basically running an all-red build here from a damage perspective. No, no, I don't think they're just going to increase it to level 50. I think it's going to be the structure is going to change things enough where... I think that you're going to be more creative about it, I got to say. They're playing into the long game. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> uh, that's what I could tell Everything's playing into the long game. For the Division 2. And that's why you see them going making these weird balancing changes and it makes you wonder like why are they focusing on that right now <laughs> you know you're like what is that why are we worried about xp right now right it's a foundation for something that they have to test through cycles and they need enough time to do that So they're going to make a change, a rebalancing of XP, and then they got to run it, right? And we got to, they got to see what happens. And it's also because of the descent game mode. So I believe the XP changes are, are around that too, because if we don't get enough XP in there, then... Or if it's less XP than we get elsewhere is the better way to look at it, right? So they had to make sure that it's equivalent but like i don't think the summit is enough xp like have you tried well, we did it and it was just like the time it takes to like you spend an hour in the summit with all directives <laughs> you know with 10 directives i mean it's scale it doesn't uh it decreases the scaling of over a certain number of directives what is it over after uh four directives five directives Actually, after five, then it scales down the bonus XP you get. That's balance, rebalancing. Otherwise, everybody would be in there farming XP with 10 directives, right? And only the people that play directives are going to be the ones they are going to outpace all the other players. Hey, 
But always okay. Let's let's start counting these right from guys though. I mean, right? I gotta remember to be going for more headshots with this assault rifle. That's kind of the point of it. Number two, right from guy. Do we see the way she moves? She gets you to miss so many shots. So there's number two. Is that a bad guy right there? It is. Does the catharsis give you hazard protection? Do you guys ever notice that when you stand in that green stuff that you don't uh, feel the effects from your shield break? Does anybody else ever notice that? Let me pay attention to this. So removing all stacks is dropping healing cloud, which restores 5% of the to all enemies in the cloud. See, there's no status effects there. Oh, there it is. Removing all stacks and status effects. That's why. Okay. I thought so. I thought so. I don't run it enough to remember that detail because I don't normally play into the status effects part. But it's huge. So it's a huge benefit. So, so it's the only thing that can counter the shield break. So, you know, there's no way you can run uh, hazard protection and you can't, uh, you can't prevent that disorientation from your shield break, but the catharsis can. Huge benefit. We should mention that because in the build, next build video, we use a catharsis because it's, it's a bigger deal than... Because, I mean, it, it's smart to run the shield with the catharsis anyways. And then that's another reason why you want to. I mean, we just got another purge. So that's, what, three foamers so far? Tranquil sounds, what up? Yeah, no, the division is a growing game. Uh, you'll see it get quiet though. It's gonna be quiet over uh, the next couple of weeks. There's a pattern between seasons. So, and it happens right after the manhunt. So if you've been playing the division two for a while, you know what I'm talking about, right? As soon as the manhunt ends, you see a, a big decrease in community. Attack 
and that's because some people are just like really um relying on the content itself like the manhunts and whatever or new missions and whatever goes on and then when they when they complete it they see it like there's nothing else to do and so they go play another game until the next season comes out which is usually a couple weeks span um we're about what three weeks out give or take the next season yeah so our shield's doing pretty good i mean it broke a couple of times but i feel like it's kind of appropriate level of breaking if there is such a thing for DPS build, you know? Because, of course, we can make the shield invulnerable, but it's not that important enough to... to want to have to do so. Um, we're literally just using it to gain our stacks. That's the most important part about it. Obviously, there's resistance, but... Oh, he uh, fooled me with his decoy. Very good. Very good. Please don't melee me. He should have blew himself up, right? And so I'm finding that it's also not a bad idea to use your shield. Um, I mean, use your body like you would bonus armor. Play it that way. You know how we say take damage. You know, you're just going to get more bonus armor. And so it's kind of the same thing with your white armor on this one. It's not bonus armor, but you heal so fast. It's okay to drop your shield and just take that damage. To protect your shield. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Instead of your shield breaking, just take the damage to your body because you heal so fast. Yeah, it's so good. I love that one, too. I'm kind of addicted to it. I haven't run it in a week or so, but... The max armor on kill one ended up being pretty good, too, actually. I really liked that one. I liked it more than I thought I would. I was saying I'm not a big fan on the max armor on kill thing. Sort of like overkill. But you got all the damage handling and heals that you need. It was sort of like there's nothing else to do. Might as well go 75% armor on kill. <laughs> you know? We should test that one in uh, Legendary too. Uh, I can't remember if I did or not. But it should work. I mean, if the 100% handling build worked in Legendary, then there's no difference. It's just... We still had high handling.
So yeah, I feel like that's it's in a really good place. I think so. You know, I'm not sure I would change much else. Because technicians giving it that skill tier. Otherwise, we go firewall, and then I don't know if you see. The thing is, is though, is that you don't really need another skill with this build. I mean. You know, you could use your decoy, I guess. Um, but we're getting a double benefit on technician. We get into the shield and to this. Um, I mean, and I do wish we could run the scanner. I do. That sucks that we can't. Because it would be nice to squeeze in some, some bonus spotter damage, amplified damage. I like this backpack, definitely helpful. Um, and I'm trying, I guess I'm just thinking about the catharsis. I mean, you could go coyote and just basically get the crits where this is damage and heals and everything. And so Holster wise, so if we drop the Picaros, I don't know, there's not much else that we get gain a benefit from. I mean we could run like an all red bellstone just picking a regen. Or even a blue bellstone. Mm. I don't but again we don't need any more regen. I think that we got all the heals we need, we got all the crits we need. And basically got all the red cores. So, yeah, there really isn't much else to do. So, when I was running 1.5 million armor and we were running the blue, four blues, um, I just felt like uh, the time to kill just wasn't quite fast enough um, on elites, really. And so, I was just like, oh, it's just like a little too slow by about like 15%. So, we took off one red core and it felt a lot better. And then I was like, well, let's push the let's push it to the next level. And we took off one more red cord. Now we're down to two. And I feel like that's where you want to be if you love power. I feel like it gets a little bit closer to that striker feeling. That we ran originally with this build. The original build for this weapon setup was the striker. And we ran the striker backpack and chest. Um, and so we'll run that again and we'll compare the two builds. Striker and Umbra is in the side by side comparison, so you want to be careful about that. You see, Umbra brings in heals into the equation, so Umbra is more on the line of um, like a Heartbreaker comparison. It's a little bit good. Like, that'd be a more appropriate thing. Heartbreaker relies on armor. This one doesn't rely on armor. That's the difference. But it brings in more than just damage. It's bringing in heals. And Striker is just pure damage. And so you, you got to bring in your heals elsewhere. So that's why it's not quite a good side-by-side -side comparison to do that. But, um, but if you can get your time to kill to where you like it to be with, like, around the Striker's build, then then you know you're at a good spot, you know? And so I feel like that's, this gets us there. And we still run into um, the catharsis mask, which I like. Now, if you wanted to push it next level on your damage, you could take off the Umber backpack and run um, a damage backpack like Vigilance. I'm not sure there's anything else I would run for damage on the backpack. Um, because... You just get end up in that position and be like, Memento. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, of course. The Memento is going to give you bonus armor. It's going to give you a, a skill tier. It's going to make your shield stronger. And you're going to get the 30% weapon damage. And you're going to get the short-term buffs because we're running around with our shield. So, Yeah. And so that's why I kind of, I'm not going like down certain directions. It'd be the same thing with Bloodsucker. But the backpack does give us that unique ultra heal capability. 
and we and it, and it aligns because we have to get in cover anyways from time to time if we didn't have to already get in cover then you know you could easily just say i'll oh, just put on a memento which you can anyways right you can anyways i love umbra with the memento it's actually really fun really fun with the uh, uh with the uh backfire build actually i wanted to pull that out again that build again because that's a, that's a really fun way to run backfire i think it's the best backfire one that i like but cool everybody all right i'm gonna leave us there and start working on a video so i will catch you guys tomorrow it'll be thursday and um maybe i'll have a new build for us tomorrow maybe friday we'll see how how much i get done all right appreciate it, everybody catch you later Tuxedo out.